Now Mark chapter 16. Let me really take it from verse 15 because this part now has to do with the second aspect of the use of the name of Jesus. What we are talking about now. Whatever you demand. If you look at the Greek word used in John 14, it is demand. While in John 16, it is petition. That's, that's, that's why I tell you words, English sometimes, you know, because all of them is making a request. But what type of request? In John 16, you are making a plead. You are pleading. You are making a request. In John 14, you are making a demand. That's why you didn't see any tone of begging here. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And when Jesus did that at the tomb of Lazarus, there was no begging whatsoever. He gave the father thanks. He turned to the situation and commanded the dead man to come forth. It's called commanding prayer. Ah. Before I shift from it, I think I need to show you a, 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 a scripture. Before I move to that... Um, Uh, uh, Isaiah 45, before I come back here, Isaiah 45, verse 11. This whole month, I'm going to stay on this. And from now, I teach it to a point, we'll do some application. Now, 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 Isaiah 45, verse 11. Thus said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, his maker, ask me of things concerning my sons. I'm trying to show you two, things, two types of prayer. You want to talk to me about my children? Ask me. Ask me. Another way is pray to me. But if you want to talk to me about creation or the works of my hand, command ye me. Did you see? Ask me of things concerning my sons, but concerning the works of my hand, do what? Command ye me. Somebody said, did God say command God? No, he didn't say command me. He said you command it on my behalf. You command it on my behalf. It's commanding prayer. It's commanding prayer. There are areas where we pray and petition God. And ask him to do something. The areas where you don't need to. You just use your authority. Hmm. Everyone say, anything that has to do with the works of God's hand. Anything has to do with creation, circumstances, I can use commanding power. Oh. Uh, you can have something and not know it. You can also have something and not know how to use it. And in the kingdom of God, nothing is yours till you understand it. Say it. That's why revelation is the key to oppression. You have to. That's why we are told to teach and preach. Okay, Mark chapter 16. I, I want to get to demons now. I want to get to demons. Some people are afraid of demons. He said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How many of you want to go and help people? Let me see your hand. If you want this to work, you have to obey that go ye. Those who make that commitment, they want to help people. Because sometimes when we teach this thing, some people want to learn it so they can only use it. If there is fire in your stove, like the guy, you use it to quench fire. And be harassing the angels. All the work the angels do is only in your own life. No. God is giving you this so you can do the works of Jesus. Remember I read the scripture. He that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall do. And the only qualification is he is to believe in me. How many of you believe in Jesus? How many of you have received him into your life as your Lord and Savior? That's the only qualification. He didn't say if you reach level something, something. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Your first thing is to make commitment to begin to do the works of Jesus. To help people share the gospel with people. 
and bring people to the knowledge of Christ. Verse 16. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned or condemned. Verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. I notice that the signs follow. Why the believer go? He said, go ye. Then the signs will start backing you up. Go ye. Uh -huh. When they were training us, the man kept emphasizing, if you obey the go ye, the signs have no, no right to stay back. He said, you only start forcing signs when you are not obeying the go ye. Go ye is the condition. The first condition is that you have to be a believer. You don't have the right to use the name of Jesus if you are not his. If you've given your life to Christ and you are his, that name is given to you as your inheritance. You have that power of attorney. In Acts chapter 19, some a group of guys, they were Jews. Sons of Sceva saw a man that had demons and said, we are Jordi in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. You see? You are not preaching him. You are not even his. But you want to use what Paul is using to adjure evil spirits. The evil spirit spoke up from the mouth of the man that was possessed. and said, Jesus we know, Paul we know. Have you seen? They recognize human beings too. They recognize Jesus and they recognize Paul. He said, but you, who are you? Now, 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 you know, in those days, when we were in the, there's something, this prayer, a prayer system they organize for children. Um, I, I'm trying to find the words to, es, es, like, uh, there's one they call APA, Anglican Praying Association little kids, some of them hold in the yards and all of that. You know what I'm talking about. Now, they will read that scripture for us. They will say, ah, if you know you have not grown to rebuke demons, so don't try it to. Because you can see what he did to these guys. But they are not explaining the truth to the kids. Children can cast out demons. It has nothing to do with if your level have not reached. It has to do with, are you a believer? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So, and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. The first sign is what? They shall cast out devils. Speaking in tongues is one of them. You can see it's the second sign. And the other ones. One of them you find there is that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If you read that, you will see that one of the signs is that they have immunity against poisons. You can't go and put, get a babalawa and put something in their food or put something and they expect to kill them. You can't. What is inside them is called the Holy Spirit. That thing is poison. It's not even a thing. It's a person. You can't poison them. You can't bury charm for them in front of their gates and say, ah, if it matches on it, the leg will swell. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. You're trying to bury something for me. You're wasting your time. Because the truth is that if I actually know that it is buried, that's when I will actually march on it. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That doesn't mean, you know, some years ago, uh, we taught on this. So after the service, one guy told the other, he said, ah, if that thing, maybe we should, why don't you test this poison? That's not what he's talking about. Mm, that is called tempting the Lord, what? Your God. Mm -hmm. And you will get yourself messed up. We're not talking about that. He's talking about immunity. Because you have evil powers out there, wicked men out there, and the cause of doing good works, sometimes they want to harm you. It shall not hurt them. It shall not hurt them. They shall take up serpents. 
Somebody said, I believe in four of them all, but this serpent one, I'm not quite sure of it. What he also means is that they can claim immunity against snake poison. That's what he means. That's what he means. Somebody asked me, does he mean becoming a snake handler? I said, no. You can claim immunity, and it's not just poison. Any of those you know, poisonous stuff that stink, you can claim immunity against it. And you see our people are doing that all over. That's what you read about Paul. Paul the Apostle. It, it might not make sense for you now because you live in Lakey. Don't worry. Don't worry. Some of you think maybe because you live in Lagos, you're away from where demons are. You are joking. You are joking. Because sometimes they go to the village and call the name of the one in Lagos. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Jesus sent 70 men out to go and preach. And as they went, they dealt with evil spirits. They did a lot of good works, healed the sick. And the 70 returned with joy. And they said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us. How? How did they, how did they, how did they obey us? Through your name. The devils are subject to us through your name. Verse 18. And he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. I don't have the time to look at this. You know, uh, I'm glad over the years my, my own understanding cleared up. Because many years ago, I knew that there was war in heaven and Satan fell. I knew about it. But I thought the war was so serious, maybe like Yokozuna and Hulk Hogan fighting. How many of you watch wrestling? I thought it was like that. Maybe the devil tried to carry God and one leg went up, but God exercised muscle and brought his leg down and finally he overpowered the devil. No. The devil just conceived a rebellion. Before he finished conceiving it, he saw himself flying in the air. Fully. See, like, like everyone said lightning. That's, is that up to one second? One second war. It was over. Before the war started, it was over. So, be, be, be let, not think, not get it clear in your head. Before you think the devil and God are fighting, maybe God is now, God had this extra age. But this devil is so strong that God narrowly. Jesus said, the devils are subject to you guys, but the person you are, because you've been making him a big deal, he said, that guy, phew, phew, just at the blink of an eye, it was true. It fell. So Jesus gave them a revelation that the person they are dealing with is a defeated foe. It's a fallen being. It's somebody that has been removed from power. But somebody that goes about masquerading when you don't have information or knowledge, he goes about intimidating people, masquerading as if he's still in charge. In case you don't understand what I'm talking about. Mm. Many of you don't know that this devil, this guy, is somebody that has been thrown down from power. He's a dethroned prince. He's somebody that is removed out of government. Somebody that has been removed out of power. But what he does is that instead of going to hide, he masquerades where people don't know him well. He intimidates them. Because his reputation still follows him. Hey. The man has been defeated. I said the man is defeated. I said the man is defeated. Uh, John chapter 12, verse 31. Let, let, let me just push that one. Let it sink. Let it sink in. Now that the devil is defeated does not mean that he does not exist. That does not mean that he, he doesn't still have capabilities. Verse 31. Jesus 
on his way to the cross, made this statement. Now is the judgment of this world. Now. Everyone said now. now. And you want to know when is now? When he goes to the cross and sheds his blood for our redemption. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. You see, the guy is a prince. Satan, he's talking about Satan. Give me another translation. Let them get it. Now is the time for the world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. Have you seen it? The cross was the overthrowing of the power of Satan. If no, who dashed monkey banana? Who gave you the right to cast him out? If not that Jesus did what he did on the cross, who? Now the ruler of this world is overthrown. Now the prince of this world is cast out. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Hmm. I just want to give one more scripture on that. Um, First Corinthians, I mean, chapter 2. Verse 6. Look at how the prince of this world is described here. The evil powers that rule this world. Look at how they are described here. We speak the wisdom of God among those that are perfect. That word perfect means those that are matured. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Ah, please give me another translation. That come to naught is what I want them to understand. The devil has been brought to ruin. Yet, when I'm among the mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. I also like this, forgotten. But that's not the, full, the, the best meaning of come to naught. Yes, look at this. Okay, yet do I proclaim a message of wisdom to those who are spiritually mature. It is not the wisdom that belongs to this world, nor to the powers that rule this world, Powers that are losing their powers. I also like that. That's why sometimes we call them powerless what? Powers. The death and resurrection of Jesus ruined Satan. He ruined him. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. It's important to see these things. There are forces out there making a mess of people. And many people feel helpless. They feel helpless. Feel like they cannot do anything about it. For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself took part in the same, the true death. Because it's the death and resurrection of Christ that got the job done. Now, if you want to know what he's talking about, because we are human beings, we are flesh and blood, Jesus had to become a human being. Because if he doesn't, how can a God die? He has to be made human so he can shed his blood for us. Jesus had to be made a human being. That true death, that's the part I want you to see, that true death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. That true death, the death and resurrection of Christ destroyed Satan. He ruined him. It doesn't mean that he doesn't exist, but he ringed him, destroy him that has the power of death. That is the devil. Verse 15. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Have you now seen what keeps people under the control of Satan? Fear. Everyone say fear. Fear. First Peter chapter 5. We go back to that place. Verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, your enemy, the devil, walks about seeking whom he may devour. 
Why is it may instead of must? Why not will who he will devour? Because he can't touch everybody. There are untouchables. There are untouchables. And there are at least seven of them in scripture. There are untouchables. He can't just touch everybody. So he has to go examine whether the person is available for him to eat or not. So what he does is that he walks about, he, he looks at people to know anybody without any form of covering, without any, any form of protection, then he pounces on them. And in the spiritual world, supernatural covering is visible. It's like being clothed and being naked. He walks about like a rolling lion. Ah, uh, Job chapter one. Let, let, let me let me let me let me show you how the devil explains how he walks about on earth. Job chapter one. You can pick it up from verse um, six. There was a day when the sons of God, these are angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came among them. Now you see that. Angels came to give report of the work they were doing, and the devil came among them. Now watch. Verse 7. The Lord said to Satan, where did you come from? Where comest thou? The devil answered the Lord. He said, from going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. So the devil has two ministries. One is to and fro. And it's possible that last week he, he paid your yard a visit or your estate a visit. Or he even came to your doorstep. But when he gets there, he sees the blood on the... Oh, no, no, no. Clear, clear, clear. He goes to another place. And in the course of all that, he finds somebody that has no covering on them. He pounces on them. To and fro is the first ministry. The other one is up and down. Somebody asked me, why up and down? I said, because he lives in, this, in the heavenlies. That's where his headquarters is. Second heaven, that's where his throne is. They say, why to and fro? Because you kick him out from here, he has to find another person. He has to be walking up and down. Till he finds one available breakfast. He walks around like a roaring lion. Lift one hand one more time. Say, I'm not available for breakfast. I'm out of bound for the devil. I'm one of the untouchables in the kingdom. Amen. Uh -huh. Look at that. Then God asks him, you know, asks me a question. What about Job? In the course of walking to and fro the earth, have you seen my servant Job? That there is nobody like him in the earth, a perfect man, an upright man. He fears God and avoids evil. And look at what the devil said. He knows him. Ah, said so I answered. He said, ah, does Job fear God for nothing? Uh-huh. Verse 10. Have you not made a hedge about him, about his house, about all that he had on every side? You have blessed the works of his hand. His wealth is increased in the land. If you read verse 1 to 4, you see that the man was the wealthiest man in the Middle East. He's a Middle East man like Abraham was. Can you be that wealthy and still be godly? Yes. Some people think that wealth and ungodliness are twin sisters. No. There are wealthy people who did not kill people to make money. There are wealthy people who did not use why you're duping another person to make money. They are clean, clean cooler. Satan said, you blessed the man, and then you put a hedge. Everyone say a hedge. What is a hedge? A hedge is an invisible wall of protection. In order to get you to understand it, I will use Satan's type of hedge. When you see sometimes these boys, the OPC boys, the Bakasi boys, that one is a, an occult hedge that the devil gives them. And usually what happens is some of them, by the time they start relaxing and trusting in it, well, it fails. Somebody hearing what I'm saying? That's why you see, you know, different cases. 
But then, Satan also recognizes people who have it. He said, Job, I've been seeing the guy, but you put this thing around him. Look at it. First, it's around the man. Second, around his house. The word house is family. Third, around everything he has on every side. You know why the devil is complaining? He has tried to put head nowhere. This side, nowhere. He will go, walk out to and fro, back, up and down. After, he said, let me give him one month. He will cool down. One year, one year. This guy is really into this. He's serving God seriously. Let's give him one year. By the time he becomes very wealthy, he will let down his guard like some wealthy people. Some will become humble when they are poor. The moment God blesses them, Wahala start. But not Job. He said, you have put a hedge around him on everything he has. And you have blessed everything he's doing. The man is so wealthy. I think you need to give me another translation. Let them get this stuff. Have you not put a, okay, he uses the same word hedge, but let me just go, up, go with it. Have you not put a hedge about him, about his house, and all that he has on every side? The guy is just worshiping you because you are blessing him. And that's the kind of accusation sometimes he raises against righteous people. The, 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 the man is serving you for what he will get. Give me six months, only six months, three, okay, three. Let me shake him and see if he will still be standing. Lift your hands one more time. Say, Father, Father I, cover I cover myself with the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that was slain for me. You don't know why I'm teaching you these things now. Arrows are flying by day and by night. The level of wickedness on earth now has increased. I don't know where you are from, but call people in the village. That's how they are bringing people. People are dying. If you have people walk in the hospital, ask them. People are dying like fowls. You have to know how to do these things. Somebody was asking me, said, how did this hedge come on Job? I want to know how to build hedge around myself. And I said, the answer is in verse 5. Look at it in verse 5. You will find it there. Okay. Let's give you verse 4. It will create a contest for understanding verse 5. Verse 4 first. 